Hello there, lovely one. Now we're going to find the equation of a cubic function. A cubic function is one of those great ones that will look something like this or something like that, or maybe it will stretch out a little. You get the general idea. Cubic function also is x to the power of 3, and we know, of course, that's a cubed number. Now, in this classic example of a question, we're given 3 x-intercepts and that's really what makes it quite easy because we know at these x-intercepts x is going to be equal to 6 or x will be equal to 1 or x will be equal to negative 2. Now let's take that a step backwards. In other words in a previous question we would have said or in a previous move at least we would have said x minus 6 is equals to 0, or we would have said x minus 1 is equals to 0, or x plus 2 is equals to 0. And how would we have got to that step? Well, we would have had something that looks like this. x minus 6 in brackets, x minus 1 in brackets, and x plus 2 in brackets. So that's quite nice. It makes me feel quite good, actually. Now, this isn't the function. We've still got to factor in the value of a. So we have f of x is equals to a blue, 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 blue. This is where it gets a little bit more fun. We've used this one, tick. Used this one, tick. Used this one, tick. We need to figure out what the value of a is. And guess what? We use this one to find out what it is. So we're going to substitute negative 12 in for y, and in for z, x will substitute 0. So let's write that down. Negative 12 is equals to a, because we still don't know the value of a, and that's what we're calculating now. And my writing suddenly got bigger, but I suppose that just helps you in the long run. It's still a little bit untidy. I apologize. Let's change that back to a plus. So that means that negative 12 is equals to a times negative 6 times negative 1 is 6 times 2 is going to be 12. So therefore, a is equals to negative 1. Okay, I'm changing color because we're changing thought. So what we have now is our function is negative 1 x minus 6, x minus 1, and x plus 2. We now need to get it to the ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d um, format. That means we've got to multiply these out. Now, lovely ones, I need you to remember that you mustn't be a hero now. We need to multiply our two brackets at a time. And then, by all means, you can rush through things. Actually, no, don't rush through things. You want to get these marks, so do them properly. And yes, this is called the rainbow method or foil or anything like that, but you're never too old to do it. So that's x squared. It's going to be minus x minus 6x and plus 6. That still needs to be multiplied by x plus 2. So I'm just going to simplify those brackets, turn it into a trinomial. x squared minus 7x plus 6 is and x plus 2. Yes, I could have done it a faster way, but my feeling is I won't remember the faster way in a stressful situation, so I'd rather do it a way that I'm always going to remember. Okay, first I multiply x by x squared, and well, x squared by x, that gives me x cubed, then x squared by 2 gives me 2x squared, minus 7x by x is minus 7x squared, minus 7 by 2 is minus 14x plus 6x, and let's move over it just a little. Um, and then the last one, plus 12, 
close the brackets, let's simplify what's in the brackets, x cubed plus, or actually it's going to be minus, let's use our eraser, problem with having a black screen is you lose track of where your eraser is, don't you? Okay, so that's going to be minus 5x squared, uh, minus 14 plus 6 is going to be minus 8x plus 12. And now, of course, we can multiply through by the negative. So it's negative x cubed plus 5x squared plus 8x minus 12. One of the things I like about these questions is how logical and methodical they are. First, you lose the 3x intercepts and formulate this over here, but the only thing left to find is a. Once you get to that point, you then substitute in the remaining coordinate. It's not necessarily going to be the y-intercept. You substitute that in and you find the value for a. After that, you just need to multiply out until you find the final function over there. See? Not so bad. Much love.